Hello. In this video, we're going to look at the impact of soil organic matter and its effect on sequestration on your farm business. Soil organic matter is one of the two areas where you can sequester carbon uh, on the farm, the other being in perennial crops and biomass such as woodland, hedgerows, uh, orchards and things like that. Getting this data right is really important and actually we've um, We've produced some useful guidance on how to do that within the Farm Carbon Toolkit. Um, there's data both um, here in this uh, really useful booklet from Farm Net Zero, and then we've got loads of other um, supportive data on our website as well. Okay, so we're going to go to the calculator, and here we are in the sequestration section. Here I've already put in some data on woodland and hedgerows. And you can see in this example, we've got five hectares of ash woodland, which is sequestering loads of carbon, 60 tonnes of CO2. And the hedgerows are also doing a good job of getting about five tonnes, five and a half tonnes of CO2 as well. But what we're really interested in is what's happening in the soils. So having got our soil organic matter data already, uh, historically and from back from the lab, we can start to enter data. Just to note, as a minimum, what you need is two data points. So between whether that's one year apart, two years apart, five years or even 10 years apart, you need to understand how soil organic matter cha has changed in a particular field using the same analysis, taking the same samples, using the same lab between two data points. Hopefully you've got more than that. And the more you have, hopefully the more accurate the data that comes out at the end of it. Okay. So, as always, go to the Add New button and we're going to select Soil Organic Matter. So, there's various numbers of uh, variables that you need to put in here. First of all, you need to put in a reference. So, we're going to call this Southfield and we're going to say this is 10 hectares. Okay. Which obviously you need to, it needs to be accurate enough so you can get that from your farm map. Next is the soil bulk density. We have some proxy values in the calculator to help you with this, but the, there's no substitute for actually getting your own soil bulk density done. Uh, soil labs can do this for you, and it's really important to understand this. So we're going to say in this example, it's, it's a value of one, which is grams per centimeter cubed. Then we need to know the depth of the soil sample. That's really, really important. Um, in this instance, we're going to say it's 0.3 meters. 30 centimetres, 12 inches, which is a very common sampling depth. You might have gone to a different depth, in which case make sure you put in the correct depth there. Because essentially this calculation is understanding the impact of the change in carbon in a defined volume of soil. So the area and the depth and the change. Okay. So we'll start entering some data in the soil organic matter table. We've got two variables here the year and the soil organic matter percentage. Now you might only have two data points here. So it might be sort of 2018 um, and maybe 2020. Okay, that's okay. But the more you've got, the better. So we're gonna say this farm's got loads of data. We're gonna start from 2013 um, and the next one is in 2015. And they started at 3.2% and then it crept up a little to 3.22%. Measure again in 2017, um, and we had say three point, so it stays static, 3.22%. Um, then you went on a, let's say, a regenerative agriculture course and really paid attention to your soils. And in, by 2019, you really started to push up. And let's say we had a rise to 3.27%, really good increase. Um, then you tested again in 2021. Um, and it was doing well, but not quite as fast. And you've gone to 3.28%. Uh, okay. So you've got a range of data there over about eight years. So we'll click save. And what the calculator now does is understand an average of the, the sequestration over the last, in this instance, eight years. And the average value is 6.38 tonnes of CO2 sequestered in the South Field every year. But that data is dynamic. And if you were to now enter, we'll go in um, the edit section and we're going to enter some new data. Um, let's say we've, uh, we're fast forwarding to year 2022 
and we've actually done some uh, further analysis and found actually it's been quite a jump and we've gone up to 3.31%, um, so uh, really big increase. And if we go back again to the sequestration section, you'll see that the rate has, has climbed somewhat to 7.8 tonnes of CO2 per year. So as you can see, it's a dynamic section and that will then feed through to the, uh, the donut chart. And we can see here that the solid organic matter um, is feeding into about 10.5% of the sequestration on the farm. Remember that was only for one field. So you can now go back um, and enter more data for other fields by simply going into the add new function again. Um, and then we'll go into soil organic matter. And then we'll go to east field. And then you can carry on entering the data for the different fields. This will be all this data will be stored um, on your sequestration page. So actually, in, in effect, once you've populated it, you only have to add new data each time you've got it. Um, say for a new year. So if you're doing this next year, you can enter your new data and I'll automatically update according to your old data. So I hope that's been helpful in really trying to understand the um, solid organic matter section and the impact it has on your business and the, the sequestration rate uh, on your farm.